Lucy's all. So my images are too big to stick on Facebook now. That's a little odd. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Maybe something changed in my editor. The sun, very odd for the past couple of days. Very odd. So has my allergies been odd this year. It's out of this world, actually. But so is the sun today. Check it out. Have you ever seen a ginormous hole in the sun like that? we got the AR2882 on the left. Massive. Deep where the coronal hole is, and 2880 on the right. And this was as of yesterday. Filmed UFOs all night last night, really testing, experimenting, speaking to the sky. Um, yeah, a lot of work. Got a lot of work in, which is good because I got a lot of uh, more things to show you all. In this video, we'll start off with the sun, and if there's not too much sun footage, we'll add the UFO footage, and if not, it'll go for the video after. Good, I have to accumulate, right? Check it out. Look at it. Is it not incredible? Massive, massive fire. The size of, oh, I don't know how many planet Earths and I don't know how many atomic bombs or nuclear bombs. This is pretty big. And I wanted to be able to show it to you really close. And I started off with the, with the, the green filtering instead of even showing you the original sun. But don't worry, I'll add it in. Before I added the filter, it's the same thing. It doesn't change. This filter... Um, obviously, since you've been watching uh, me post these sun videos, it helps our eyes. And like here, it's like, oh, what a break for the eyes, right? Uh, especially for me these days with the <laughs> with the the screen, I must be getting too much screen time in. So I am being a little careful with my eye. I mean, I'm, I'm on the screen all day and all night. So I'm just trying to um, distribute the time uh, properly, evenly, that I'm going to be on the screen, but uh, I ain't going to stop. Look at what we're able to get. So let's zoom in to the sun right now. That's why it's offset there, and I'll get in as close as I can. And just imagine how big this is on the sun. Look at the massive coronal hole around that fire and energy. Look at the holes. It runs thousands and thousands and thousands of kilometers deep into the sun. La Palma's crater breaks apart. Several vents open up. Lava flowing daily, every day, every night. Um, earthquakes now inside of La Palma. Several mouths and vents opened up. Um, very high activity. The last time this happened was 53 years ago and it lasted three months at La Palma. Wow, <laughs> I never thought I'd see fire on the sun ever in my life, ever, ever, ever. Never thought I'd be seeing all these amazing things in the sky. So there's going to be a UFO video coming up right after this, and I'm going to get the sun in this video. Actually, I'm going to add it 
at the end. Right now it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to go outside and show you what the sun looks like today. So we'll be comparing the 2882, that one right there, with today's 2882. Look at this coronal hole. All the black spots around that massive fire. This is running deep from inside of the sun. Have you heard of heliophysics? If not, you're not suitable to speak of the sun. <laughs> no, nor am I, right? Is that what you're going to say? Well, what is it? Um, list of solar storms here. Um, I'm looking up on the list of all the solar storms of different types are caused by disturbances on the sun most often. So it doesn't rule out that it could be harp or anything else. You know, uh, uh, a star coming into the solar system. Here's an asteroid or something going by the sun once again, just the other day, yesterday. So most often from the coronal mass ejection simmies and solar flares from active regions or less often from coronal holes. And that's what we're looking at. That's a coronal hole, my friends. And look how enormous it is compared to the other ones. We're, uh, we're gonna go see today's sun also. Um, active stars produce disturbances in space weather. With the field of heliophysics, the science that studies such phenomena. Now let's go see today's sun. So this was about an hour ago. So sunspot 2882 is now a bit lower as the sun has rotated itself towards the left. You can see that by comparing the two spots. So look at it, it's even more aggressive than it was um, at the beginning of the video when I showed it to you from yesterday afternoon. This is going to affect weather. Even though there's just one spot, do you see the size of the spot? Look, we can even see the fires on the surface of the sun. We're talking about a, a great distance. So the smallest light that you can see on the sun is very, very large. In the solar system, the sun can produce intense geomagnetic and energetic particle storms. That's what we're seeing in the clouds here. Many of you are capturing them, and lots of us don't know what they are. Energetic particle storms capable of causing severe damage to technology, including, but not limited, to large-scale power outages, disrupting or blackouts, radio communications, including GPS, military, right? And temporary to permanent disabling of satellites. Temporary or permanent disabling of satellites and other space-borne technology. Top secret, right? Here's an image, not mine. It has to do with NASA 2007 on Wikipedia, but asteroids have certain shapes, and they are shaped like potatoes. I get so many people laughing at me. There's even the potato theory. You know, it depends on the size. Once the object gets to about 400 um, kilometers in diameter, I believe it becomes spherical more spherical-ish, like Earth and like the moon, spherical-ish, <laughs> right? Not flat, not round, spherical-ish. I'm gonna try to start a new trend here, right, Crawlface? So check it out. This is an object that is not an asteroid and we can compare it visually because that's what, the only tools that we have are the cameras and we're not scientists, but Scientists do research like anyone else does. Do you guys all know what heliophysics is? Heliophysics, the comprehensive new term for the science of the sun, solar system connection to the sun. That's what they're looking for, just like us amateur researchers are. The exploration, the discovery, and understanding of Earth's space environment, and the system science that unites all of the linked phenomena in the region of the cosmos influenced by a star like our sun. Heliophysics concentrates on the sun's effects on Earth and other bodies within the solar system. As well as the changing conditions in space, it is primarily concerned with the magnetosphere, the ionosphere, and the thermosphere, the mesosphere, and upper atmosphere of the Earth and all the other planets. Heliophysics combines the science of the sun.
Clouds within a mile or so of Earth's surface tend to cool more than they warm. These low, thicker clouds mostly reflect the sun's heat. This cools Earth's surface down. Clouds high up in the atmosphere have the opposite effect. They tend to warm Earth more than they cool. Heat rises. So the heat that's trapped here on Earth rises up but gets caught before leaving Earth's atmosphere and it comes back down as rain and sometimes very, very dangerous storms, depending on how that sun is affecting Earth, of course. Heliophysics, that's what they're studying. They're studying all about the sun. Cause the slow's just coming soon. The slow's just coming soon. 